Hey everyone, welcome back to the IO Panel Podcast. This is episode 240. My name's Evan, I'll be your host this week. Joining me as always, Mike and James, how are you guys doing? Good, good. Absolutely great. Good and great. That's fantastic to hear. Do how are you doing? Prayer? I am excellent. Do we have any more elevated synonyms to use? Good, great, mm-hmm. awesome... Um, Exuberant. Ooh, that's, a good that's kind of a that that's, that's kind of an adjective. One hundred. Uh, hunt it. Keep it hunt it. Keep it hunt it. H u n n e t. Question mark. Oh, I thought it was hunt it. So. Yeah, hunt, hunt it. it. Yes. Uh, cool. Good to see you guys again. It's been a bit of a break for some some good reason. How are your past three weeks been? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. Um, and getting the apartment cleaned out. Productive. A lot of stuff done here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you came here now, you'd be like, "Whoa, whoa!" So, would I think it looks like a normal apartment? Mm. No, no, no. It's like no. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. You're like, you, uh, you'd see this. You'd be like, "This guy just was allowed to leave the halfway house after many years <laughs> in jail, and now he's trying to." He's thinking about buying furniture now. Mm. That's what you that's what you'd, you'd Yeah, say. that's the problem. All the all the furniture was removed, mm-hmm. yeah. and no furniture has been procured. So, well, I think it's it's high time you started cruising around Chevy Chase or some of the nicer suburbs with a pickup truck and see if anyone's throwing out an old couch. You can <laughs> scoop it up. Mm-hmm. It's an idea. Jeez. There's some that's hey, classic there's some nice garbage out there. <laughs> classic I mean, Michael. <laughs> the last couch was from a very wealthy neighborhood in the Washington D.C. area, mm-hmm. off of Craigslist. So that's you're you know, and it was free. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a lateral move. It's, Michael you know, is the method works. Poverty. He he's very poor. He only eats soup. Mm. And uh, he doesn't have any money. He can't afford anything nice, so he must revert. He must resort to Craigslist and free couches. As an mm-hmm. adult, this is how he lives. <laughs> Even well, though James, he, he makes he, more money than all of us on the show right now, <laughs> and he, he, he survives a, on cabbage soup and shares yeah, a, a yeah. bed with his two uncles and three aunts. And oh, I yeah, also have the, the highest factory. rent of the three of us. So. That's, That's true. true. That's the true. highest housing cost. So keep that well, in come mind. Move down to Tennessee, Mike. It's uh, somewhat reasonable. Hmm. That's the problem, though. Yet to to get reasonable housing rates, you have to move. Forgive to me. An unreasonable somewhere reasonable place. Somewhere crazy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, look, Memphis is like mostly a real place, and uh, <laughs> you know. I live in the suburbs, and it's you know it's got everything that we would need. It's a real place. It's a real place. We've been there. It, it is a real place. Mm. It's just real far away, but it is a real place. <laughs> it's really close once you get here, though. Yeah. How about that? Yeah, true. It's like that. Uh, it's like that uh, thing I saw. Like, how far away is Ohio? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's like, you know, like Ohio. They have Ohio. It's like not far. And it's like, then the states next to it kind of like kind of far then it's like mm-hmm. more states like eh, you know then it's like <laughs> like really far that's how tennessee is you know it's like like i think it took a, what is it a thousand miles across just across the actual state itself no it's uh half that hmm. 500 miles yeah that's still a lot <laughs> so you can drive eight hours and be in tennessee and you can drive 15 hours and be in tennessee depending on where you go yeah, I was gonna say that's from, pretty far. It's a, driving from here to Montreal is six hundred miles. Mm-hmm. So that should tell you something. That's that's pretty far. That is how oh. distance works. Yeah. Distance we live in a country. large country. Yeah. yeah we with could all large go to Wyoming. States. Yeah, yeah we could feelings about that, James. We we wouldn't that, want to. Oh, old Wyoming. My 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 old armor mater. Your arm of modder, yeah. Arm, arm of modder. 
Wyoming so football anyone... all the way. Go Hokey Dokes. <laughs> Go sports team. Go sports team. So now James and I though getting back to the to the furniture and James mocking me for being weird or whatever. I don't know what he's mocking me for. Um we're uh we are supposed to go shopping for couches and things uh at some point. Mm-hmm. Although now I kind of feel like it may you know no need to buy anything until I'll I'll be moving to a new apartment in uh the next probably month or two. So yeah. is there so might as well just wait for that significant rent increase and also uh square footage increase or is most mostly the same on both fronts oh uh well i mean it won't be that much of a rent increase really and technically it'll be a rent decrease because we're we'll be splitting the cost right um but uh no it'll be about four hundred dollars more a month okay what's yeah. the square footage of your current place Apparently it's thirteen fifty if we go by what the guy was showing us. No way. Or whatever yeah, whatever I, I it said. I don't know. I don't he so the guy told us that the place was he said the rooms are all the same. So I don't know I don't believe that. But I don't I don't also I'm only going by the picture. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean It's like basically got we're four paying walls and a door, man. They're all the same. Well yeah, I mean so Michael's current place there's clearly a master and a not a master bedroom although when michael pulled all his shit out of the room i was like this room's fucking huge mm-hmm. it's a massive room it's actually really big it's just michael had his entire life was crammed in that four by four box so <laughs> it looked like a four by four box but it's actually a big ass room he's just beds in there now and i'm like wow this is actually a fucking luxurious room this is like pretty nice so i don't know I mean, yeah, I guess, you know, but yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, I think for me, I'm just excited about the fact of being able to, I'll have my computer and bed in the same room. And that means, and it's going to be a smaller room, which means I can put the VR, I can mount the VR things to the wall instead of having those stands and once oh, yeah. you mount those to the wall, the VR becomes much more stable and reliable, which would be really good. I wanted to do uh, build a little racing car rig, but I can't do that because the room would be too small for that. But it still be good. It'll be still be cool. So you could retrofit the apartment with a Murphy bed. So you can move it out of the way and and uh, that, have a lot more room for VR. That'd be cool. I'd love Just to do glue that. your mattress to the wall. You know. I mean, in an ideal world, me and Michael would buy a house, you know, like, and be confused is... as a kindly gay couple. <laughs> well, James, once we live the apartment life for a little while, maybe we can buy a house as a as an ambiguously gay duo. Yeah, exactly. There Do you, you want to live in Owings Mills, Maryland? Well, I don't. Owings Mills, Maryland. I saw a two two floors, like three bedroom. It might have been a two bedroom, two bath, or three bedroom, two bath townhouse for like two hundred and forty thousand. That's actually a great price. Yeah. Yeah. What's in wrong a, with it? I wonder. <laughs> it's, it's in, in Owens Mills. Mills. It's like far. That's not. That's not the bar. The barrier to entry anymore. You guys haven't been looking at houses enough. You have, Evan. I'm sorry, you don't realize this. That's dude. That doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it could be like in fucking Western Maryland. Nobody cares. That's mm-hmm. just gonna be six hundred grand. It's Maryland is like impossible to buy a house. We're fucking rambling now. This is not much of a podcast, but it's impossible to live in Maryland without paying a zillion dollars a month. Two hundred forty thousand for Owens Mill. Owens Mill is not that far away. And you it know? seems like a nice neighborhood from the pictures. Yeah, there's something wrong with the house. Either the roof needs to be replaced, or there's no electrical system, or someone <laughs> stole all the pipes. There's no water. Some something crazy. There's something wrong over there. So well, the house is fucked inside. It's two hundred and forty thousand for the pictures of the house. There you go. That's more reasonable. That's what it is. Yeah. Hmm. Or there's a dead body like in the house they can't get out or some shit like that. <laughs> it's something. There's something wrong with the house. Or there's a ghost. There's some some, some shit happened hmm. over there. You just send me the link so I can look at it, but I'm sure it's something crazy wrong okay. with the house. You know. <laughs> but yeah. I mean, ideally, in like two, three years, me and Michael will be able to 
say, okay, we're ready to get out in four years, but we're ready to get out of this. Four years is a long time from now, but yeah, be ready to get out of this. And either we'll go our separate ways or we'll buy or one of us or both of us will buy a house and then we can fucking have a lot of space. Because mm-hmm. I would love to have a VR room or a computer room. You know, mm-hmm. it's I, I don't want to be, I hate having the computer in the same room I sleep in. But as I told Michael, I need a man needs privacy when he's on. Sometimes mm-hmm. you're on your computer, you know, and you're not wearing any pants. Mm-hmm. Your computer just can't be in the living room, you know? <laughs> So yeah, mm. I don't own a TV. <laughs> you know what I mean. That's technically a <laughs> lie. Yeah, <but> boy. Sure. <laughs> I mean, I, it's over. My TV's over there in the kitchen. Doesn't even know. Not even hooked up to anything. Okay. It's not. I, I unhooked the thing. It, it could be. I mean, <laughs> if you want to get particular about it, jeez. I I do. Okay. I don't know do why now. It? Now I don't need it. It was just for yeah. my mom to watch. So okay, yeah. I don't need it. Yeah, but yeah, it's still on for now. So you guys gonna have? Uh, you gonna buy a full rack for the new place? Put all your server shit in there. Two Dude, racks. Michael is a fucking bungle boy. You know he has a, is his he. I was looking at his his server. It's actually it's a computer. You know it's a full size. It's a, it's a a full case computer, mm-hmm. you know. I got a rack. I'm bringing. I'm big time and Michael's small time. Uh, yeah, he's still building computers. I'm working in racks here now. You know, he's got to gra- <laughs> He's got to jump his game up. Mm-hmm. Well, we needed a computer with this a good size case, but also one that was didn't sound like a car or a sorry, not a car, a jet engine. Mm-hmm. Well, um, sorry. At, at all times, so get it together. You know, if it's not like. Gee- you ain't living, my man. Yeah. <laughs> if your living room isn't unbearable, then uh, <laughs> yeah. If you don't want to kill yourself when you're around it, then you don't own a fucking server. It's like, do you really live in a server room then? <laughs> yeah, <think> exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind it when I'm in the server room at work. It's fine, you know. Then it's cool. Yeah. yeah. You're like, oh yeah, this is nice. You know, this yeah. is neat. But well, like, you're, you're at home. Like... You're like trying to watch a movie. You're like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, turn it all the way up. Like, what the hell, man? Huh? So true. So true. Mine's and Those off. hot it's chicks bad. you mentioned, they're not going to go for that. So, Yeah, they're going to be like, what is going on in the corner there? <laughs> Don't worry about that, girl. Put your hand on my pecker. But I, I can't oh concentrate. There's all this There's all this sound coming from the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, get off the free ass. <laughs> it's yeah. heating up in here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, jeez. I'm looking forward to the uh, network rebuild and tour that you guys are going to be putting together. That'll be fun. At the minimum, we'll use my Switch. I have two good Switches. So we'll use my Switch. And Michael, Michael, I know Michael has cable run all over his house now, and we'll have fun doing that again. Oh, yeah. Well, we're going to so we're not going to do it, it. Not do it in this one, obviously, but the next one we'll do, uh, we'll do it properly. So Yeah. Michael's passionate about cable running cable. It's like one of his superpowers. I Not never really. know somebody has right. so much cat cat six E like laying around or cat five E <laughs> laying around. He says, oh, you yeah. don't have I a thousand all, bought, old, thousand meters, you don't have enough. I bought all cat six stuff, even the the, the little RJ forty five ends and the wall jacks and everything. Yeah, and I saw that 6. flat cable you had. That was like, actually pretty cool. Mike, that flat you uh, cat for six. cat seven. Uh, it's more expensive and doesn't serve any purpose. Fair enough, but it's a higher number. Why don't you that just get is. a couple more of those Unify access points and get yourself a mesh network and just go full Wi-Fi? We're going ten gig. We're going twenty-five gig fiber in the new place. I, I don't believe you, but that'd be nice. We'll be fiber boys. That would be awesome, actually. Yeah. Got to call a company out. They're like, all right, we got to drill this concrete. You know, like, all right, do it. Yeah, we, have a, we have a guy. We have, they're, they're inside a fucking clean room, cutting the cable. So you yeah, get a, a call portable from clean the, room. Get a call from the uh, your apartment manager. Like, uh, what are you doing? Like, oh, we just got some guys putting some infrastructure here. Like, mm-hmm. uh-uh. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, so it should be good. Uh, new place. Once we get all that sorted out, um, yeah, that'll be fun. Me and James will be uh, living living like the frat house days. 
you know? Yeah, yeah. Nope. probably Better probably way that. more boring. Probably way more boring. Better than that. You can you can uh like you can do so much we'll throw a kegger. things together it's like that. Uh uh-uh. you can cook. Yeah. You can step up your cooking game, your meal prep, your workouts. I know that was uh something you're looking forward to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very true. Absolutely. Yeah, we did work out. We did go work out there a couple times, but I think the problem was I was so far away, and it was just like, okay, next time I'll catch you next time. And then we just didn't, you know. what I mean, yeah. what happens happened, right? You know. But now living together, yeah, I think I think me and Michael both want to do. It's not like we're sitting around being like, man, I want to be a fat piece of shit. Like we want to do really well. So I think this is gonna. I think this is gonna be really good for us. Actually, I think we're both beyond a time in our lives where we're like wallowing in not doing well. I think we want to do well. We want to eat better. We want to be in better shape. So I think it's going to be a good thing. I think it's going to be a good thing. You know, I like to cook Mm -hmm. and I cook enough for two people. (laughs) Um, And uh, this will keep me from eating enough for two people. So it should work out. (laughs) Nice. Have to start making double batches, James. Yeah. Four people for four people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Double batches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. I mean, three eggs, uh, 16. I don't know if you met me, but, uh, you know, I don't eat like a normal person. So, yeah, that's fine. We're, we're going to we're going to do good things. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Good, good. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that was uh, that's really all there is to talk about that. Evan, how about you? What's new? Um, Pretty chill. Couple weeks. Just much like yourself. Cleaning, getting rid of uh, knickknacks, memories, junk. Stuff I don't need. Um, I tried... Last time we spoke, I told you I was going to try some beef tongue and my pressure cooker, and I did. And it was somewhat disappointing because there's like two sections to the beef tongue. There's the upper portion, which is like 75% of it. And uh, I was telling Mike, I'm, I may have overcooked it a little bit. I don't know. But uh, I watched some videos on YouTube and everyone sort of put it in at, you know, 30 to 40 minutes. And they're like, oh, it's the perfect, the perfect doneness. And to me, it was like, that looks a little rare. So I cooked it for an hour. And it was a little... Chewy? It it wasn't chewy, it was like squishy. Yeah. But... uh, It should melt in your mouth. The bottom portion, where like attaches to, to your, you know, down here. Mm-hmm. That was phenomenal. Oh, it was. It was good. Yes. Okay. I thought you yeah. like, that was the, the weirdest part. No, no, dude. The, like, the part that looks the grossest. So fleshy. Is like, yeah. melt. that's fucking melt in your mouth like a roast. That's delicious. I only nice. want, I want the bottom tongue. Like, fried that's lower how it should, horn. It should all be like. Bottom tongue. <laughs> that's how it all should, it should all be like that. It should all be tender as hell. Like, really melt in your mouth. The one time I had it, and yours, the term time you made it was really close to what it should be. A little, mm-hmm. little chewy, but close. But the other time we had it, we had, uh, I don't think, I think Rick was there. When Rick was still alive. We had, uh, we had it at the place with Gil. He took us to some El Salvadorian restaurant, which isn't there anymore. I've looked for it a million times. It's gone now. But we had that tongue breakfast the lengua breakfast mm-hmm. and it was beans a- and omelet and tongue and man wow melt in your mouth delicious just little cubes of heaven it was absolutely wonderful yeah really good i'm definitely going to try it uh probably a couple different ways maybe i'll cut it a bit i cut it into chunks like beforehand um but there's just like not a lot of like striations of fat in the upper portion mm-hmm. whereas the lower the lower portion is like a really it's like a chuck roast don't you have you to know? skin it or something wasn't there a thing you had to do to it mm-hmm. you have to like Usually, steam it to pop the skin off or some shit like that well when like after you boil it pretty much when it's cooked is when you take the skin off but uh you can you can cut it before that Okay, yeah, I remember last time you did it, and we were <laughs> you were pulling on it like, well, oh, I have a picture yeah. of you pulling on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, man, the broth that it makes that's delicious. Really, nice. some of the best beef broth. So I nice. recycled that, put some chicken in it, and some more vegetables, and had some uh, some stew for the next couple of days. That's so overall great. a success. That oh. Sounds awesome. Yep. Um, I spent a few hours yesterday doing some. 
network infrastructure upgrades. I finally got rid of my TP-Link uh, oh, no. router, put in the 1U quad-core Xeon PF Sense machine that I built like two and a half or three years ago. Oh, geez. So uh, I'm I'm a PF I'm a I'm a PF Sense guy now. I'm a network expert, and uh, I installed a Unify AP AC long range uh, Wi-Fi access point. It's pretty nice. It's a lot faster than what I had. Nice. Is it a big uh, saucer section looking thing, or a... it's smaller than I thought it would be. But yeah, it looks like a saucer. It's like a dinner plate, right? But a little smaller. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Blue light. Yes. Yeah. I know you have some Unify stuff. Is it shape? Is it like uh, rods instead of saucers? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's like these, a, these are industry standard terms, folks. It's like a water bottle, you know. It's like okay, yeah, but with you know just a flat top. Yep. But I'm very happy with it. Mm-hmm. I mentioned to Mike, I'm glad that I only had this equipment laying around for two years instead of five. Did you install the Unify software locally on your Windows computer? I installed it on a a laptop that I have over in the other room. And I had forgotten that you have to like have that running to access the, mm -hmm. the access point. So I would like to have it, uh, one of two things, either make a, a tiny virtual machine or something just to host that. Um, although I, I don't know if I need to, because I'm pretty sure the access point, uh, will is pretty stable. Like I won't have to go fuck with it much. But I do like how it can sort of give me a display of the network and everything. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I have it running in a on the free NAS or now true NAS um, mm -hmm. in a in a jail. Yeah, I should probably do that. That's that's easy. That'd be easy mm -hmm. to do. Yep, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I need to update mine at some point. It's mm -hmm. an old version, but uh, firmware it, or the software, or whatever both so like mine's version like 5.x and up to like 6.x now but there's no easy way to upgrade my software in place so i think i might have to build a new one or something how come because it's a weird jail thing and i have to do it all manually oh uh, okay when i plugged mine in I, kn I knew that i was like at least a you know a couple versions of firmware behind but I plugged everything in, and I guess it was automatic. I don't know. It was like the firmware I could update. Up to date. The firmware on the devices I could update. You know, mm -hmm. like you know, download firmware, boop boop boop, and you're good, right? But the actual thing that's controlling everything, that's a little more complicated. So mm -hmm. Okay. That I'll have to. Might just have oh, to redo at some point. But when I when we'll I see. first tried to run the Unify software, it's like you need Java. I was like. Java. Mm -hmm. Fuck out of here. Huh. Yep, exactly. <clears throat> yeah, and you're supposed to have it like running like at all times on your computer. Like yeah. but but I mean you don't really need to. It's just if you need to change something. But I kind of like that in the vein of like it's for security. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't just go to the IP and fucking log into it. So I like that. It's a hassle okay. and a blessing. Go ahead, Jake. Let me let me interrupt you guys real quick. So we were talking about this earlier, Evan, and I and I was just thinking I want to know your opinion before the show. We mean like we're talking. Um, if you could pick a best between the three: Battlestar Galactica, The Expanse, or Star Trek. Um, like best quality, or like mm -hmm. what do I want to watch? Just whatever. Uh, it's it's entirely subjective. Best, yeah. And we're including all of Star Trek, sure. And all of Battlestar Galactica, sure. Um, I'd go with Star Trek. Really? Yeah. Why? 
probably because it's I'm like the most attached to it. I know I like the cinematics of the newer Battlestar Galactica stuff. I never once watched any of the old episodes, so I don't have any like nostalgia attachment like you might. Um, no, I don't. It's all cheese. It's the it's it's the worst <laughs> type of sci-fi, honestly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I like. I kind of like some of the grittiness of the newer Battlestar Galactica from you know 15 years ago. Yeah. Um, but I can also get that with Deep Space Nine or Star Trek Discovery. You know. Um, mm, I hadn't thought about that. And the I just don't really care for the Expanse. Really? Yeah. You know, I didn't think about that, but you're right. Uh, I wouldn't say Discovery, but uh, Enterprise mm-hmm. also yeah, has a little bit, has a little dirt under its fingernails. A little, yep. It's a little gritty. Where some of the Star Treks have a little cheese. Yeah, I, okay. All right, I'm with it. I'm with it. Okay, just wondering. Did you guys both choose Battlestar Galactica? No. I, I think I chose... I don't know what Michael chose. I actually didn't ask Michael. I was I, I, I did what I do, which is just talk. You thought about and it, like, and then Michael you're like, was, Mike and I were talking b- before the show. No, <laughs> no, we talked about it, but I think I was more like trying to explain something else to Michael, and it segued into that, and then I just mm. kind of said what I thought, and we never then we got distracted by something. But uh, I thought Battlestar Galactica, uh, just because the production value, production quality is so high, you know, um, and the expanse because again the production quality like so much money spent on the show and i just like it feels more realistic but star trek but then i thought about star trek and it's the star trek is just different mm-hmm. i don't think it can be rated on the same scale as i would rate like battlestar or the expanse because you wa- I, I don't watch star trek for gritty hard hitting stories even though sometimes it offers that, I watch it for nostalgia and perfect sci-fi. You know what I mean? Whereas, you know, The Expanse is a, a, a middle beginning and end, a beginning and middle end, and same thing with Dark Battlestar Galactica. Like we always knew it would end, and you know, it's not. There's not a million stories to tell in that universe. Whereas, like Star Trek, they'll be story. They'll be telling stories. Star Trek stories. Long after we're dead, they'll be showing star, some version of Star Trek. So, yeah. I mean, it's kind of hard to choose. And I I chose, and then I kind of took it back, and I don't know. You know what I mean? So I actually just had a thought on why I think I don't like The Expanse. I mean, they're obviously great cinematics, and I'm sure there's, like, you know, realistic societal... Um, delineations like belters versus you know people on earth shit like that that's like real and i I do like that but i don't like most of the main characters um how like dramatic and how much tension there is between these you know six people who have to save the universe um now maybe you know i think i watched through season three or something like that so maybe developments have come that i'm not aware of that make it better. I liked the whole aspect of that detective guy. And he's like, Oh, I'm made of blue crystals now or whatever the fuck that was. Um, but the, the, like the captain of the, was it Rocinante? Yeah. I don't know his name. I don't like him at all. Yeah. yeah he's my least favorite character. Him and his girlfriend are the two people I could do yeah, without. The they show. like turn me off of the rest of the show. I like yeah, Alex. I he's my guy. Yeah, I like Alex. Uh, I like, I like Alex. I like the other guy who has no emotions. I like the chick, who runs, who's like the president of the Earth Confederation. Mm-hmm. And I love the the Martian chick who's like, we, you know, we'll watch the blood run down from Olympus Mons. Like I just love that chick. So Bobby I, Draper. I don't care for Bobby, and I hate the woman diplomat. Avrasala. Yeah, I like she the the scenes that they show you of like behind, you know, behind the lines political corruption and shit makes me want to murder her and all characters like her. That will immediately like give me a th- a thumbs down for whatever show really? that they're on. Yeah, I fucking hate that. But the Why? other 
it just makes it's like such a reaction. It's it's so close to reality, I think. And I'm disappointed on how much corruption there is in reality. I'm like, ugh, this is more of this garbage. So it reminds you of reality. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay, I get that. I get that. But I do like that skinny, probably Asian chick who was like in charge of the some other ship or space station. Oh, uh, fucking, fucking. She has a hard. She has a good name. She got like crushed between some machinery or something. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. still alive though. I forgot okay. her name. Uh, well, she's the belter. I like chick. her a lot. She's the belter, like kind of captain. <clears throat> yeah. I, yeah, I like her. Uh, name. Rocker, proper. I don't know. She's a weird name, but she's a cool name. Yeah, okay. she. I like her too. I like Draper just because you know I like. I'm gonna be predisposed to like any chick that reminds me of fucking uh, Torres Rodriguez, whatever her name is from uh, from. Uh, Fast and Furious. No, well, yeah, sure, but also uh, where it's for me, it stems from the the chick who's in uh, Aliens with the red bandana. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. see that. Uh, so I've had a long time since I saw that movie as a kid. I've always had a hard a hard crush on on uh, tough Hispanic women. You know what I mean? Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Dangerous Hispanic women are my thing. So, I mean, I'm going to be predisposed to like Bobby Draper. And Avrasala, I mean, I remember her from when I was a kid in things. And she was like this really beautiful. She was like this always. She was like, what's her name? It doesn't exist anymore. Jaja Gabor. Mm-hmm. Okay. So back when Jaja Gabor was kind of the tail end of her fame, this woman was around who plays Avrasala, and I don't know what her name is in real life, but she's always been like this, like, Jaja Gabor, like, old-school beauty. And even as she's older and still not as hot as she used to be, she's still, like, fucking, like, I would. You know what I mean? If I want to bone, like, an old Indian lady. You know what I mean? Like, she's the old Indian lady I'd fucking poke, you know? So I think that... And also, I like I like tough women. I just like tough women. Tough women... Mm-hmm. I fucking love tough women, and she's a tough, fucking tough old bird, and I respect that. But I do understand, like, I I think, I was telling Micah earlier, like, the, some of the emotional content in some of these shows, like, I could just live without, you know what I mean? And, like, mm-hmm. every time there's, like, a love scene or something, like, Michael Burnham kisses the fucking guy who turns out to be half Klingon in the first season, I just, like, skip, 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 skip. Like, I have zero interest in any of it. I don't mm-hmm. care about her relationship with him. None of it matters to me. And almost every movie I watch that has, like, uh, I've been watching Foundation. Um, I don't know if you've watched any of that. That's, I would say, did you, see, you didn't watch Game of Thrones, right? No. No. So Game of Thrones is excellent. So for the last season, you should consider watching it, just like The Sopranos is excellent. Um, you haven't seen that either, have you? No? Nope. Excellent. should watch it. Definitely a watch. Um Foundation is Game of Thrones in space. So it is a true, true space opera, like Dune is supposed to be, like Dune is, sort of. You know, there is some political stuff, but not really, you know what I mean? It's more like the shape of the world, you know, type of thing. But it's really amazing. And it's like Asimov wrote it. So it's like the basis for Star Wars and Dune and Star Trek is all based around the Foundation. It's like that old and that foundational to to sci-fi as we know it today. So the show, they've done a great job with it. I want to read the books. I haven't read the books. Um, The books to uh, The Expanse are virtually unreadable. Like, honestly, Michael, you should should pick up the first one. No, aren't you reading them? Aren't you reading one of them? No. Oh. Oh, I read the first one. It's unreadable. It's like the whole Blue Crystal shit, but on heroin and poetry. And it's impossible to impossible to read. It's just like so introspective and so like this mind fucking metaphysical journey bullshit that I cannot connect with. But um, and I'm assuming Foundation is probably going to be a lot like that because from the same time period. But um, but Foundation is great. But there's scenes in Foundation where you're like, oh, he's gonna kiss her. I'm like, I don't care, bro. Like I'm not even here for this. Like I don't not I don't care. Why are you shoehorning a relationship into this? I don't care that they're in a relationship. You know, I just don't care. You don't need. I don't want to see them fuck. I don't give a shit about any of this. 
So, yeah, I mean, I, I get that. I totally get that. And, like, those characters, the guy from Plays of Rosinante is honestly, it's almost like Hollywood made an attempt at a hero character. Like, they got a white guy who shaped, like, the heroes that we know. Like, I mean, I don't want to sound racist, but, like, we all, we kind of realize that there's, like, an archetypical hero of a space show. And it's always some guy with a square face, square jaw, black hair, you know, maybe a scraggly mustache, a little scraggly, a little knot, you know, a nerf herder type guy, you know, <laughs> kind of rough around the edges. It's always that guy. Like, let's be honest. It's always that guy. And he looks like that guy, but he has a weak chin. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I, okay. He, he he has a there's a there's a thing about him that I'm like ugh I don't like I don't like it. So and his the character's woman, name is Jim Holden. Yeah, he has he has the name of a hero. It's very like Jim Holden, Matthew Burnsides. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just that kind of name. I like the other guy. I like Amos. Amos is great. I love Amos. Amos yeah. is like the stoic. You know, I just do. Sh- it's shit's got to be done. I'm gonna do it. I like Amos. You know, I like Amos. He doesn't fuck around. He's like, let's just get this work done. You know what I mean? Uh, Evan, the chick you like is Drummer. Drummer. Okay. Yeah. That's her name. Her real name is Kara Gee. Nice. Yeah, Drummer. I think they're going to kill her off this season. I think she's done. I think this is the last season. Isn't, the, isn't I wanna this say the last she's... season of the show? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so they're, they're so. kind of implied. I saw an article that implied that they're like, will, will, will Drummer subvert Hollywood sci-fi tropes. So I guess there's something predictable that, that people think is going to happen that may be subverted. I don't know what it is, though. Hmm. She's Canadian, but she's uh, Native American. Ooh. Yeah. Really? Like, oh, she kind of looks Asian. Like, yeah, she's Native American. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. Like Ruth. What is Ruth, Michael? We don't even know. Is she Native American? Is she an Eskimo? She's or is an she enigma. from Guatemala? We don't know. It's a secret. We have no idea. It's all the same, bro. Or is she Asian? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and the chick that you're like, she's the classic beauty. She's from Iran. There you go. Yeah. From Iran. Yeah. And her name is almost unpronounceable. Yeah. It's <laughs> a crazy name. It's the, her first name is Sh- Shore. I don't know how you say it. Yeah. So... Look for a picture of her when she's younger. She's a fucking baddie, yo. Mm-hmm. She's a straight baddie. Dude, uh, some Persian women. Oh, yeah. Ain't no other version Excellent. like Persian. <laughs> <laughs> they are. The, <laughs> yeah, boy. <laughs> the cooking guy is like, yeah, boy. <laughs> I believe she's in a, a movie that Evan had recommended to me at one point. The House of Sand and Fog. Probably. She's in oh, a bunch yeah, of shit. Sounds about right. That's with uh, Jennifer Connelly. Mm-hmm. Right? And Ben Kingsley? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so Ben right. Kingsley is the husband, and this old Indian lady, as James likes to call her, who's actually Iranian, mm-hmm. is uh, the same, wife. Same. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you just type in Persian actress... It's like one honey baby after another. They're all fine as hell. Mm-hmm. I mean, Iranian chicks are fine. That's just how it is. They're wasted on Iran. It's true. The girl, the girl who's the Mars chick, she's from New Zealand. Yeah, she. I knew she is like Maori or some shit like that, or has some kind of shit in her. You know, <laughs> give her some white bread and and a sev and a and a sunny. Is it, what is it, Michael? What is it, White bread, yes. vanilla ice cream, and fucking uh, and Seven Fanta. Up and Sunny Fanta. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She'll oh be happy as, happier than pig and shit, boy. Tell me. It says she's also Samoan. There you yeah. go. So there sure. you go. I knew she. Was, I knew she was some island chick. Bobby as, Draper, as, as James says, she has some shit in her. Yeah, exactly. You know what's up. <laughs> she got some shit in her. Hmm. The other guy who Evan likes is like Indian or something. Oh, Alex? Mm-hmm. Yeah. His, his actual name is Cass Anvar. 
Although he is also uh, Canadian. He's he's well, great, by the way. He's absolutely yeah. great. Mm-hmm. He was born in Regina, Saskatchewan, and raised in Montreal, Quebec. There you go. How unfortunate. He's he's really done well for himself, given that uh, those hard circumstances of uh, the beginning of his life. Evan's just so jealous. He can't even help it. And he's like, Evan is so... It's so taken aback by his own plainness that he has to <laughs> lash out at others. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> James, how was your couple weeks? Um, I mean, it's fine, man. I've been sick. Yeah. Actually, I've been sick the last like two and a half weeks, crawling around the house with uh, the old the old gout. If you got the gout, shout it out, as I say. Well, I might. I have something for you down here in the Yum Update. What's that old knuckle sandwich, huh? You'll get just your have mind to wait right and find out. All right. Shall we get into some news? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yay! Uh, I think this first one is it mine. I'm assuming it's, it's mine. Evans, but I don't know. Oh no, that's mine. I uh, no. Not mine. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's mine. Okay. So, uh, basically, we've all read Snow Crash minus Evan. Oh, Evan, you read it, right? You listened to it. Uh, I think I listened to, like, half of it, at least. Oh, well, good. Don't be enlightened. Be one of the Nimrods out there. Mm -hmm. me, and, me and Michael will stay floating on the clouds above you as the learner. That's fine. Mm -hmm. huh? more, more room for me down here. <laughs> oh boy uh evan's by himself he's a little bit above the rabble but just below me and michael <laughs> he's by himself um plenty of room to stretch out there mm -hmm. so uh uh was it neil gaiman michael and is it neil gaiman snow crash no no who is it it's i believe it's neil stevenson neil stevenson neil that's who it is so Neil Stevenson wrote uh, Snow Crash. He coined the word metaverse in Snow Crash. And the metaverse in Snow Crash is about, it's a, it's basically the internet on heroin. So people work there, people play there, people have friends there, people have love there, people do everything in there. And it's basically VR. It's a VR slash AR environment where you can go and work and live and make money and purchase things and have digital goods and services and all kind of stuff. <clears throat> so now the new thing, we've got two new things happening here. We have NFTs, which I'm certain is a fad, but probably isn't. And then we have, well, yeah, I'm slowly changing my mind on that. That's a topic for another day. Um, but, uh, and then we have the metaverse, which uh, you know, surprisingly to me, a lot of companies are like, like that's the next, like they predict this is the next like place, right? Like it was semiconductors, then it was the internet, then it was, you know, I don't know, whatever came after the internet. I think we're still in that internet age right now. And the next thing is the metaverse. Um, so Facebook has been working toward this goal. They bought Oculus, you know, I think six or seven years ago. They bought Oculus, and the whole, the end game was for this metaverse thing. So, to, to create a metaverse. And so, Facebook, because they're fall, they fall under such hard times <laughs> with the Facebook papers and everything else, I guess old Zuck said, Android Zuckerberg, Zuckerberg 1.0 decided, you know, it is time to fucking rebrand the company because the Facebook name is really run through the mud. It really means privacy breach is what it stands for now. So mm -hmm. they changed the company's name to Meta. They're deleting the Oculus name completely. Mm. Um, That's a shame. Yeah, it is a shame, actually. I feel sorry for Palmer Lucky. Uh, but he fucked up a long time ago and got bought out of the company. But, you know, I still feel sorry for him because he was the he was the thought process behind Oculus. And he's he had this open source dream of VR and it's completely been put into 
it's really bad now. You know, like games have been blocked off into silos, and you know mm-hmm. they've done a lot of stuff to box other competitors out. It's really bad. So um, the Oculus name, Oculus Connect, which is the Oculus Conference, is now called Meta Connect, or was called Facebook Connect for like a year, and now it's called Meta Connect. And the uh, Oculus Quest Two is going to be changing its name to the Meta Quest Two. Um, it's fucking stupid, yeah. Uh, and so at the new Connect conference, basically Zuck went through a like a two two hour kind of keynote and talk, basically covering uh, all the different things that Meta was going to do. And uh, I'll tell you, not impressed. You know, honestly, not impressed. It was, it's not a good conference. It basically was more scary than anything else, you know, because basically what he's doing is he's going to make VR chat, which already exists. He's going to make it look like PBS kids because mm-hmm. that's what all of the avatars and shit look like there. And then he's going to make, he's going to integrate holograms. So people can use AR and and be in 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 the metaverse in you know in Meta. Uh, he's going to integrate full body tracking somehow. They don't explain how they're going to do any of this stuff. They're going to uh, bring NFTs into it, which honestly is pretty genius. It's smart because basically it's going to take that digital currency and or digital items and make it a currency. So, you know, you want to buy a hat for your avatar, that's an NFT. You want to buy a blah, the, everything has a price and a value now. So digital items have value. And, you know, this is something I had thought about for a while for like Star Citizen, for instance. You pay $100, $200, $300 for this digital ship, you know, but it has perceived value because we find it valuable, but it doesn't have actual value. NFTs guarantee actual value, at least as long as the value is perceived which is already happening in the Star Citizen community. Right. So uh, NFTs are a great fit for something like this. Although NFT gaming is like a whole other thing that I'm like kind of scared of. It's like, uh, don't let's not do that, please. You know? But I know that companies want to do that, right? They want to monetize heavily so they're going to find a way to make us pay more money other than the entry cost for games. But yeah, so um, I got a few videos that I'm going to post in my extra section by a few VR content creators that I like. Uh, one's Fia, and one's a guy named Thrill Seeker, and they're going to cover the uh, they cover the event. Both very negative reviews. Honestly, I watched a highlight reel of it. It's ne- negative, unimpressive. They don't show anything. They show a bunch of like pre-made cinematics. There's nothing. You know, it's more of a thing saying, "Hey, this is what's going to be possible." This is like a video for the normies to say, "We're doing something really cool, and you're going to want to be part of it." But the thing is, my mom is never going to use it. Mm-hmm. You know. She's not going to know well, why. She's like, why do I need to go in the metaverse to do something? You know, like, and for the people internet. who who are looking forward to this, like yourself, you know, not Facebook Meta, whatever, but like large scale VR integration, everything. You see this, and you're like, this is trash. Yeah, I do exactly. It's, it's for it's to amaze the people who don't know anything. Yeah, and I don't. I'll be honest with you. I don't know, and I recognize that there's a lack of vision in me because of my age and the fact that I own a VR headset, but I do not really use a VR headset, you know? And I wanted to challenge, after the, after the conference last week, I was sick, so I didn't do it, but I wanted to say, I, wanted, I said to myself, well, maybe I, let me try to work in VR every day for a week, you know? So Monday through Friday for eight hours a day, have the VR headset on and just sit at the computer and use VR and see if I could do it, you know? Hmm. Um, I'm still might still thinking about that challenge, but obviously, you know, I'm like, uh, I don't know, you know, but we'll, I was still thinking about doing it. So we'll see. Maybe I will try that. But the thing is, that's the th- question, right? Is VR a place you want to work? Does, does VR equipment right now, something you want to put on your face for eight hours? Probably not. My VR headset weighs a five or six pounds. <laughs> I don't right. want to wear that for five hours. You know what I mean? I, 20 minutes is like, I'm like, oh God, that's too long. You know? couple years from now there's going to be a vr headset syndrome yeah just like probably. people people like i have arthritis in my thumbs and my head's always pointed down it's like yeah because you're on your fucking cell phone 
yeah. for four hours a day. And they're like, oh, yeah. I did unanticipated consequence. Well, you know, the, the interesting thing about VR chat is, and there's a great movie coming out soon. It's like coming straight to like the internet. It's called We Met in VR. And it's about a couple who fell in love in VR chat. And it's mostly about VR chat, really, is what it's really about. Propaganda. And I can't. No, no, it's not by them. It's by the by community, by the community. But it's you know it, this love, this 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 is a documentary about this people falling in love, but it's really about VR chat in general. So I'm kind of interested to see that to see what it's uh see what it's all about, you know. But I think I think that uh, VR chat already does everything the metaverse is talking about. If they integrate an economy like Second Life had and NFTs to allow digital goods to actually mean something, you know, and then they have to do a few stuff on the technical side with their avatars and their worlds, they have a, they have a metaverse, you know? Once people can make money, the thing is, what will people do online there? Mm -hmm. You know, like if you could sit, let's say you're a digital creator of some sort, you you make I don't know you do Photoshop editing. If you if your boss works if you have a comp you work for a company whose only main office is in the metaverse, are you going to put on a headset and then go online to that metaverse office and then sit there in the metaverse <laughs> and work? Right. No. Weird. Right. So the question is, what are you going to do in the metaverse? And I I mean I know I'm old. I don't I haven't realized the possible potential. There's things. It's like tablets, right? If somebody asked. If somebody asked me when I was 15 what I would do with a tablet, I'd be like, oh, this, 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 that, you know? So I'm just too old. I recognize I'm old. I don't know. Maybe a 13-year-old already knows what he wants to do in the metaverse. I don't know. It could be, you know? but it's also... Uh, I, I may have lost my thought, but it's like... The people designing it are not those thirteen-year-olds. They're like no fifty-year-olds. Like, what does a thirteen-year-old want? So it's going to be don't... awful. Yeah, and but there, there are like what you said. There are going to be companies who are like, we're office, we're headquarters in the metaverse because we're fucking trendy and cool. Yeah, and I hate those companies. Well, the same thing happened in um, the same thing happened in with Second Life, right? Second Life came out. And when it came out, there was like uh, a bunch of people. There's a bunch of random people talking about. There's a bunch of random people talking about like, oh, IBM has an office in Second Life, and Dell has an office in Second Life, and you go there, and basically they bought an island, and on that island they have like a building, they paid some Second Life creator to make, and they made, and that's it, and it's nothing there. And it's empty. And I can go there, grab a Second Life avatar, and walk around in it. Because back then, I think back then they knew that this is going to be a thing, but they didn't know how it was going to be a thing. You know? So they were like, well, digital presences are going to be real. And people are... And, and, and they know human beings like to see, you know, they like to see what they can. I'm going to share this while, while we got this thing here. While we're talking about this. And I'll just leave it playing muted here. Oh, fucking Tuckerberg. <laughs> so, people are going to see this whole thing, you know, and, and they know people recognize with their eyes, right? People are like, they, they know they want to give people a, a uh, an experience outside of just going to the website and reading. You know, there's something transformative about touching, about being there, that kind of thing. So I get it. Like, they knew back then we're going to do something cool with this. But I just don't think that, like, that was the time. And I don't think this is the time either. And let me see if I can flip through and find, like, some of this. He's, he's going to show some of it. So, like, this is, like, one of the houses in Meta. And <laughs> he's, yeah, he's going to pick an avatar. Look at the avatar. Mm -hmm. Like... He wants to shoot it in the fucking head right there with his hand gestures. Yeah. So this is what they're showing, right? And the a lot of the people who are watching this, they're like, how is any of this possible? Like that they're like they're like technically none of this is possible. Mm -hmm. Because 
there's full body tracking and there's all kinds of things that have to happen. And right now the technology just doesn't even exist to do this that way, you know? So really interesting. I mean, so you look at this and then if you like look at VR chat, you'll see VR chat is all of this right now. It's lacking the integration with like screen shares and shit like that, mm -hmm. you know? So she's, this girl's like, look at this graffiti. And so then they all go to see the graffiti and then the graffiti jumps off the wall and they take a picture of it and bring it into their virtual space. And I'm like, what? How's that happening? Like how, like how, like, is it AR graffiti? I guess. I don't know. You know, anyway. And of course, this is one thing they beat the entire privacy and safety are built into it from day one because they know these guys are fucking notorious and they know nobody trusts them. They know they have zero, zero trust, you know, and they have this horizon home thing. So you could be in your home and then games and integration with your friends to do stuff. Look at these fucking avatars though, dude. They look fucking stupid. Mm -hmm. You know, they look fucking stupid. Absolutely so ridiculous. At a, at a very like basic level, I have two opinions on this. One, it, it's like love and hate. So I think, uh, and this kind of goes back to what I was talking about with some of the characters in The Expanse. Like, I think the internet is a great thing where you can become best friends with someone in, you know, India or whatever, across the world, someplace that you may never have been. And you can interact with them and have uh, whatever relationship on the internet. But <clears throat> there's, I that's very dangerous because it can also like detach you from the reality of a person right next to you. You may not like them, of course. You, you're not going to be friends. But if people like were sort of like suppressing human interaction with fake human interaction. And I don't like that. I don't know that that's a fair way to think about it. Just because I think that I think that some things, human interaction is universal. And I think that no matter where you are, if you do a thing enough, like I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think saying it's fake is kind of like, I don't know. It, it's, it adds it's, like an extra layer. Like I can guarantee I have, I have been, uh, or like I have, you know, acted differently online than I would have in person. Like, yeah, in my, I think everybody past. does, but, 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 but your friends, your quake friends who you go, who you've gone to Texas and hang out with, are those real relationships or are they fake? They're minor real friendships. That's but, there you go. but we have met like there will be people who who basically like spend their life in this metaverse and oh, absolutely. essentially detach from reality other than having to like eat, drink and shit. And absolutely. Sleep. But I think that I think those people are the minority. I think okay. saying that is like someone saying game video games make you violent. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to make somebody violent, but I don't think it's going to... I think the majority of people are going to come out of VR and be like, fuck my life. And they're going to want to go... <laughs> they're going to want to, like, fucking... They're either going to want to live in VR and they're going to fucking stay there forever, or they're going to go out and hit the streets. Because life just mm -hmm. is constantly moving and changing. I mean, I can show you video after video after video of people who met in VR chat who... And I'll just leave that playing in the background, too. So this is VR chat in case nobody knows. So it's might as well be the metaverse, but way better. Um, and you could be any va avatar, but and there's so, furries, yeah, and there's tons of furries. <laughs> Which is look, let's be honest, that's what this is going to be. Who wants to be themselves? Who wants to be well, your fucking you're gonna self? You're going to have to be yourself in the metaverse, James. Yeah, I don't want to be myself. <laughs> I mean, I, I I'll be a better version of myself. I'm not mad about who I am, but I mean, there's and I don't know what's happening with this video. But but there's like somebody who's like I want to be a fucking tiny ass little fox girl, and there's gonna be somebody else who's like I want to be a naked I want to be this I want to be an e boy, you know I don't I don't know like this like people aren't gonna want to be themselves, 
You know, people aren't going to want to be like, put on an avatar that makes them look like themselves. You know, I mean, there's fucking it's VR chat's a crazy, crazy place. Uh, th there's a ton of thoughts here. All right, let's get out of this before I get fucking we get <laughs> in trouble. Uh, VR chat's a crazy place, but I'm just saying, like, this is what it's gonna, this is what it's gonna degree to. VR chat's a great example of what's gonna actually happen. You know, and and look, the questions you're asking are interesting and important, and. There's going to be some reveals, great reveals happening, I'm sure, over time with people who like, I don't leave my house anymore because all everything I have is online. I don't know. That, I'm, I guarantee it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to be as prevalent as you think. And I think you're thinking that way because you're old like me, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how we think. We're like, I don't understand it. So whatever. Like we're, we're slowly becoming your dad. You know, that's just how it is. That's how it is. It's true. That's just how it is. We're progress like, is going to progress right past us. Whenever you turn, like, I'll say 30, you're fucking locked in. Those are your thoughts for the rest of your life. Probably. Probably. You know. But, yeah. Interesting hopefully stuff. This, so we'll see what happens with this. Hopefully this actually turns into Second Life. And it's, like, super popular for a couple of years and then just fades away. I think it'll always exist, but I don't think it's going to be what they think it's going to be. Mm. It, I, I think that it's going to be missing that gotcha thing. You know? There has to be a thing that makes you be like, I need this. Like, it's not going to, like, like it, there has to be something that makes it a cell phone. You know? Look, you can't live in this day and age without having a web-enabled cell phone. I guess you can, but you don't want to. Like, My you're severely handicapping your... She's proud yeah, of it. yeah, I know, but that's because she's old. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know? Sorry, yeah. that's how it is. She's she's like, what do I need that for? I never, I didn't need that in 53. Well, yeah, I guess you didn't. It didn't exist. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But but you know what? I need this shit. I need to be able to find shit and do all this other shit. You know? So it, it, this day and age, you kind of need that stuff. And there has to be a thing like that for this. And if they don't have that, I don't really know. You know what I mean? And it's like, like Gary V, who I've gotten back into Gary V recently, He's all in on NFTs, and I got to ask myself, I, I mean, I love his vision of NFTs, but without the metaverse existing, which he doesn't address and doesn't speak of, and he's probably not even, it's probably not, on, not in a plane where he's aware, without the metaverse, metaverse existing, NFTs are valueless, because where are you going to show a digital item? Are you going to print it out and put it on your wall? Are you going to put on your Twitter page? What if you don't have Twitter? Mm. My mom doesn't have Twitter. I have Twitter. I don't use it. Where does NFT have value for me? Where am I going to present it? Do you think any of my friends care about Twitter, NFTs, digital goods, video games, metaverse? No, they don't. You know, Michael is my most, Michael and you are my most tech savvy friends. My other friends don't give a shit about it if it's not wine, some other motherfucker's backyard, or. Uh, fucking, I don't know, thick white girls, they don't care. Mm -hmm. <laughs> AKA their girlfriends, that's all they care about. They don't care about any of this other stuff. It's a totally out of their fucking, they're not even in their brains. So, who's this shit for? You know? So, there has, a metaverse has to exist to make this thing something people, regular people care about and want to show off. You know? It's not a place where you can show your shit. Even art. I wonder how many people actually have art in their house. You I know? Have art. Yeah, but like I have art too. It's all stacked up on the floor. It's not even up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I do Mine's put it when shelf. I move Yeah, when I put when I move with Michael, I'll put it on the wall, but only with the hope that someone comes to our house to see it. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with Michael. He has art. It's not even on the wall. And I'm sure when he moves in, he'll put it on the wall. Because he's like, maybe someone will see it. <laughs> but if no one's going to see it, who cares? I own it. That's it. It's a way. I know how it, what it looks like. So human beings do shit to show people. That's a whole other topic anyway. I'm, I, I'm, I'm really fascinated by where tech is going, though. Because I, I half feel like I'm in the middle of it. And half like I'm left behind by it. Because I don't see a value in a lot of this stuff. And I'm, I want to, though. I really want to. You know? So, well, it's like know. you said, I mean, 
do the ships and stars doesn't have value? That's true. You're right. It's the same thing. Or like loot boxes or any of that shit that I don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. I mean, all that stuff has value to somebody, right? So, I mean, but even that's because people can see it. Star Citizen ships have value because this ship does that, this ship does that. It sure. looks like this. It's rare. It's expensive. People will see me in it. You know? Loot box shit. I got this skin. This skin is cool. People see it. They're like, this guy has money. This guy has taste. Right, this looks, they only see he looks like a badass. In a digital environment. Yeah, so th that's the question. Where's the digital environment you're going to show your NFTs at? Right. That, that's my point. Where are you going to show them? I know some people are printing their NFTs out, and other people are putting their NFTs on as their Twitter handle. But if you don't use Twitter, I mean, Facebook is dying. People aren't putting NFTs on, on TikTok. So what the platform doesn't exist to help you enjoy that stuff. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess they're trying to make it right now. I guess you're right. I mean, I don't know. I think I think what he's trying to do is a byproduct. I think these two things are being made in conjunction and unrelated to each other. They just happen to be happening at the same time in history. That's really it. I think because we played Second Life, mm -hmm. we are uniquely positioned to understand a, the economy and like Someone made a thing, and we bought that thing from that person, so that thing has value. You pay a thousand lindens for hair or a shirt made by some guy in Germany because because he spent time working on it, and so you bought it from mm -hmm. him because you liked it, and you want people to see you in it, it in the game. Value. It has value. But most things, you know, Fortnite, people pay for Fortnite dances and shit like that. You know, I think the rest of the world is realizing what we already knew is that digital economies can be real. But the thing is, for the regular Joe who isn't gaming, isn't living in the, living in the internet, who doesn't have their own personal but, website... But who's the, who's the regular Joe? I mean, who is this, this fictional regular Joe you speak of? I mean, I'm thinking of my mom, or JC, Sarah, Inga, let's say Crawford. Yeah, but for all of them, there's 20 more people who are 22-year-olds who are into all this shit, right? So. Yeah, but do you think... I don't think... You know what I think? I think that the reality is that people who game and people who are into VR and shit like that are more rare than you think. I think most people are like Jamie and Inga and Dave in them. That's what I think. I think most people, they do wine on the weekend and brunch with their friends. They don't play video games. Video game is still some outlier shit. Maybe they have a Switch and they play on a Switch casually. But they're not like me. They don't spend like 30 hours a week playing games. They don't have a Steam account. You know? I'm always I think surprised most people when like I that. hear about other people playing games. Because I'm like, oh, it's, it is a thing. Um, yeah. Like random people that I know from the bar like have like PS4s or Xboxes or whatever. They're like, oh, yeah, I was playing Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption 2 the other day or whatever. Yeah, like, huh. Josh told me. Josh like, told what? me. Gay, gay Josh told me that he plays. He's addicted to Genshin Impact, and he's like, I have an 88th level rogue, you know, fucking mage, and it's like this. This character is probably like this little tiny Japanese girl with a staff, and he's like, he has a hundred of them, and every time they come out, he buys a new one. He's like a fucking addict, mm -hmm. you know? Right. So those people exist, and maybe maybe they're more common than we think. We just don't know it, you know? Well, I think the thing is, I think, like, when I think about Josh, right, he's a good example of someone who's a gamer, sort of, right? But would Josh play VR chat or Second Life? Or would he have a digital house somewhere? I don't know. I don't think so, uh, honestly. Apparently, I don't The think Sims so. was very popular at one point, right? Yeah, it was. It was popular because human beings, I think, have a weird addiction to dressing up people. And they yeah. had houses and they had whatever. And... Yeah, yeah, it was popular. So, mm -hmm. but I don't, I don't know that the thing is, I, I think, I don't know that, like, I tried to get, um, I tried to get our friend's ex-wife, our former friend's ex-wife, 
What's her name? With the fat cat. Shannon. I tried to get Shannon (laughs) to play New World because Shannon's a gamer, quote unquote. She played Second Life with us and she played The Sims and she didn't, she had no interest in playing any of it. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think now she, I think maybe she plays Animal Crossing or something on Switch or Sun Switch, you know. But she's a mom, and she doesn't game like that. I just think gaming. I think what happened is maybe it's a single man's game. No, I, I think that our See, generation don't have, don't have time to play thirty hours a week. Well, I think our generation is transitional. I think the next generation will game the way I game. I think all of them, a lot of people will. But right mm-hmm. now, it's they're not, which makes me think, I don't know how the metaverse and digital goods will survive in a world where it doesn't have the audience. I guess maybe if you're 13 now, you're coming up, you know, gaming is going to be more important, more prevalent. But, you know, when we were kids, obviously, you played on a console, there wasn't no fucking multiplayer. That's it, you know? So I don't know. Uh, maybe, yeah, I mean, way back then there were computer games, obviously, but yeah, uh, there were. Yeah, I didn't even have a computer till I was like in middle school, you know. So I wasn't even exposed to it that young, right? But I had a, uh, I had game consoles, and everyone right. I knew had game consoles. That was like a thing, you know, when we were kids. Yeah, like everyone had a Nintendo or a Genesis or whatever. And that was the shit. I remember Evan well, had a PlayStation. I was like, oh, damn, he's got a PlayStation. Yeah. You know, some light. <sighs> it's funny. Well, Michael's Easy getting clap. his apartment cleaned. His, our friends are helping Michael clean his apartment up. And the fucking Claudia is there. She's like, what is this? What is this? <laughs> and Michael was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was that's like, a- yo, girl, that's a 3DO. Careful with that thing, girl. Don't play around. That used to be the shit back in the day, you know. Three like, DL was back. a sign of wealth. Put it back on his velvet pillow, please. Yeah, be careful. Seriously, three DL was like, yo, this kid has money. He's got like an arcade in his house. Mm-hmm. That's what it was like. I remember Robin Keith had one, and then we were like, he was like, we we're like, you can play arcade games on it, and he's like, yeah, I have to get them from Japan. It's like we're like, damn, Robin's a beast, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, there was that one. That one. That one was a crazy one, uh, which of course I didn't get till later. But um, also the uh, the the real crazy one, which when you're saying arcade games, it's making me think of that is Neo Geo. Neo Geo. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Neo Geo. That's what he had. He had a Neo Geo. That was yeah. like, I want to say it was like literally six hundred dollars for the system. Yeah. And, $100 and, that's in a like, game. and that's in like 1994 or something or yep. whatever. And yep. like $200 for a game or something like that. Yeah. Or $300 for a game. And I was yeah. like, how? Like, how is that? They're like... crazily expensive. And They're obviously crazy it was expensive. never like a huge success, obviously. Uh-uh. Um, but I guess some people bought it. And I have a Neo Geo Mini now. So there you, you need go. You need to go find a real Neo Geo. Otherwise, your system, your your collection's like some bullshit. Oh, it's lacking? It's garbage. It's a garbage collection without a Neo Fucking Geo. Fucking laughable. Yeah. Oh, I know. I used to have a 32X. Punk. Can't even find it. It's gone. Punk bitch. Dude, well, I have 30... so many things I need to acquire. It's ridiculous. 32X is thirty two X is probably easier to find than Neo Geo. I feel like Neo Geo is going to be a hard one. Well, I need a, a 32X. I need a Neo Geo. I need a Sega CD. Mm-hmm. I need a Turbo Graphic 16. I need the mm-hmm. CD add-on for it. I mean, we could, I could nobody, go on and on. An Atari Jaguar. Needs a Turbo Graphic 16. I mean, we could go <laughs> on and on, James. Gentlemen, let's not forget the greatest gaming console known to man, the Atari Jaguar. Ugh. Yeah, I just said the Jaguar. I need to get one of those. Oh, sorry. I did yeah. not hear that. I, I oh yeah, that. that's on the list. Another one Don't worry. with his 19 was... button controller. Yeah. Apparently, there's two different versions of the controller, and there's one with a million buttons and one okay, with yeah. well, you slightly a less. One. <laughs> but yes, apparently, Evan, the way it worked, uh, the games came with overlays in the box that you put on the controller. Really? And it would so it'd tell you what all the buttons are, you know? That's what oh, we're thinking. Like, uh, it had like one of those, uh, like a map thing that went mm-hmm. on top, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. I remember they had those for the uh, the big arcade boy controller for the Nintendo, the fat mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. You know, with the knob had a joystick on it and the two big buttons. There mm-hmm. was a thing, an overlay you get for Street Fighter for it. It's an NES Advantage. There you go. Yep. Just in case yep. you got confused on what A and B did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like it's not a lot of buttons, but yeah. <laughs> well, no, it showed it. It showed the one my cousin had. It showed like how to do the things on it. Like so, you do a Hadouken like. Bep, 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 oh, like, that must have been you the know, Super had, Nintendo like, version. A, yeah, it had like a different stuff on it. Yeah. What's the um? What's the thing? The fucking rocket launcher. The the Nintendo rocket launcher. Super oh, scope. Called? Super scope. <laughs> need to get one of those yeah. too. See, Mike, you need a power glove. I that. mean, all kinds of stuff. You know. Okay, so Mike, in your <laughs> in your guys' new living room, you need to mount a super scope to the wall with like a Mario head next to it. And then right. put the and then the other side a predator helmet. Like what? Oh. Yeah, this is all a good idea. Then just a severed some... head from an Italian guy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then like recreate some some fake marble columns with a red velvet pillow and put the power glove on top of that under a glass box. That'd be cool. That, that kind of that that kind of theme. That is cool. That is cool. Yeah, one of these days I'll have my complete collection. Mm-hmm. Apparently, for the Jaguar, there's only like 60 games or something, like total. You know, it's like not it wasn't very popular. relatively speaking, it's not that many. You know, yeah. So, all right, let's uh, yeah. drag this into the pit. That's my fault. Mm-hmm. Um, we're on a compressed schedule today, guys. Can't yeah. tell by the way we're doing the show. <laughs> all right, um, the next one's also mine. So I just learned about this today while we we're doing a show prep. Uh, Travis Scott concert in Houston, Texas, uh, Astro World. I think it's like a festival that happens every year. Uh, eight people were killed, like trampled to death, uh, squeezed to death, a cereal by a cereal crusher. Um, <laughs> a huge freaking guy. <laughs> a huge freaking guy. <laughs> yeah. That's got to be a, a like a bad way to go, man. I, that would oh, suck. the worst, the worst. You know, um, you apparently, that, I can't breathe. Ah, yeah, like you're like, oh, this is this yeah. sucks. Like, yeah. So most of them were teenagers. A few of them, I think the oldest was like 27 or something like that. Uh, and and then another, I think it was another 25 people were injured, sent to a hospital. Um, mm-hmm. So when I first heard this, I was like, okay, well, you know, people are like cancel Travis Scott, and I'm like, is this really Travis Scott's fault? You know, but Absolutely apparently Travis, not. well, yeah, apparently Travis Scott is notorious. At his concerts for inciting fights, telling people to jump off of fucking second story windows, um, <clears throat> challenging people <laughs> to fucking do all kind of things. Uh, he's apparently a notorious piece of shit. And go ahead, Evan. I would still say no. I mean, don't be a piece of shit. But I see sort of a parallel between that kind of stuff, like encouraging that and like if you're in a metal show it's like all right open up a circle pit and fucking smash each other it's not that different maybe one crowd knows what to expect well yeah i think i think there's i think because of the inherent violence that comes from like a mosh pit there are people there like oh that guy's actually hurt Mm -hmm. you know like they're they're already thinking like Shit can happen, so let's be true. mindful. Oh, you know, what they I mean? know what that is. Yeah, and like, yeah, I'm and they're aware of people it. going in there to participate in that are also aware. Yeah, I don't know if anyone at the Travis Scott concert was like, "Let's get injured." Like, I don't think that was a that was a thought. You well, know? Like, the Travis concert, Travis Scott concert, also had fifty thousand people there. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, a lot of people. A lot. Not, not the problem, like every right. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, the problem. The problem also seems like, and it, like again, if Travis Scott is at fault, it's because if he saw someone hurt, he didn't stop the show, like many musicians have done. And Twitter is filled with people saying, showing video evidence of other artists, <laughs> Avenged Sevenfold, Lady Gaga, uh, fucking the guy who died from. Uh, What's it called? Da, 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 ba, ba. Oh, I can't think of the song now. It's the, the the guy who died, who had blonde hair, and everybody loved him. And they're like, he died. Um, Chester Bennington. Chester Bennington. They show Chester Bennington stopping a concert. You know what I mean? So, uh, and and I think it's also compounded by Travis Scott's history 
of like some guy tried to steal his shoe and he told the audience to kick his ass. I mean, we're talking about packed concert and like beat his ass. He's like, beat his ass, get him, get him, get him. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's kind of, you want to avoid that, right? Because you can't control what a crowd is going to do once you start egging them on and you have all the sheeple there. Like, everyone's like, fucking pull out a knife and murder this motherfucker then. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to escalate violently. <laughs> You know, um, and then the whole the whole thing about him, a guy was hanging off of a fucking second story window and Travis Scott's like, I see you up there, but are you going to do it? They're going to catch you. Don't be a pussy. And the guy jumped. You know what I mean? So uh, and another guy got pushed off and fucking was paralyzed. And Travis Scott's like, oh, I'm sorry, man. Here to take my ring. You know, <laughs> so Travis Scott's kind of a kind of a knucklehead. Now, is this his fault? I don't think so, because he's not the venue owner. Right. Mm. Um, But. Uh, apparently there's, there's a bunch of people who were at the event and one lady who's an ER nurse, she was squished pretty badly and passed out. And so they body surfed her to the front, to the security guard, right? They passed her to a security guard and she gets to the security guard and they put her on a fucking bench. They put her on a seat and put a bottle of water between her legs and left her there. And when she woke up, she woke up and it was like pure pandemonium going on there and people were like and she looks back and there's people laid out on the ground like this and she's like she's like did anybody check in a pulse and the, the security guards like we don't know what to do uh. so there was there was like two medics the medics didn't know what they were doing they were fuck ups they didn't have an ambulance an ambu bag whatever that is they didn't have like they didn't have what they needed so again not travis scott's fault venue's fault right so i don't know but anyway tragedy strikes and so we're talking about it. That's it. We'll see. I don't. I, I, and I told Michael this earlier. I don't think he's going to be canceled. I don't think you. This, if anything, if any people are are bulletproof to being canceled, is rappers. You know, because most of their audience doesn't give a shit about Twitter, and the audience that does probably doesn't give a shit about negative press. They're kind of like cult like, and mm -hmm. um. You know, you look at uh, Dave Chappelle. He said one. He said one crazy thing after another. This guy's bulletproof. You know, nothing's gonna ever happen to him. Uh, the baby. He literally killed a guy. You know, he killed the guy in a Walmart or something. This motherfucker can't be canceled. Can't be arrested. Nothing bad's gonna happen to him. Um, yeah, these guys are just bulletproof. Nothing's gonna happen to them. They're fine. They're gonna do just fine. So. If hmm. some Karen online who never heard Travis Scott's music before decides to cancel him, I guess good for her. You know, he's gonna keep doing what he does. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that. That link takes you to uh, the live stream that played already from uh, Houston, Texas police, the Harris County Police Department, uh, where they discussed the incident. Uh, they don't give a lot of detail. They just said people were serial serial crushed. And there's a, a, a large man on the loose. <laughs> Willem Dafoe is nowhere to be found. Wait, Willem Dafoe is, uh, was, yeah, he's, he's missing in action. <laughs> Not where he needs me to solve this crime. Uh, okay, that's it. Hmm. Thank you, James. Hey, no problem there, Chief. So, I guess we'll go to the next one, which is mine. Which is time. Time is on my side. Oh, okay. I was thinking so, time after time. Oh, that too. Isn't that a movie with the uh, Malcolm McDowell? And a time after time. Yeah, that too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, who's that? Mm -hmm. I don't know. That's the chick who's like now a racist, crazy person. Mm. Cindy Lauper. She's lost her mind. She's a Fox <laughs> News person now. Oh, really? oh. Hmm. Yeah, she she became your she she she's become a, an extreme case of your dad. <laughs> she's your dad where black people don't exist. <laughs> Is she looking for a seventy five year old husband? Oh, probably. She's probably seventy five year old goddamn self. Perfect your dad match. can marry your dad can marry some money. Mm hmm There you go. So this is about uh today, Sunday, we had to switch our clocks. So we had to do the old fall back. So we went from daylight saving time to standard time. Cool. So at 2 a.m. earlier today, it became 1 a.m. again. 
Oh. Yes. Or did it become, or did it leave from being the time it normally is to go back? Or did nothing change at all because time is a human construct? There you go. The mm. f- facts. Well, facts, no cap. The the clocks changed, but <laughs> but uh, yeah, other than that, not much has changed. Um, so this, I, I just put a link to this article here. This is what I saw in the Washington Post. It's just a uh, thing talking about you know how what it is, how it kind of started, and the the proposed changes to make it to stop it. But it's probably not going to happen because while where we live, you know. It's the time change wouldn't be too bad or the difference, like the difference in daylight hours wouldn't be too bad um, for other locations like that are like way far north or way far south or whatever. It would be more extreme. Mm -hmm. Like some places it would be like the sun would rise at like 430 in the morning, you know, like like Scotland. No, I mean, I'm just talking about the United States. It's not even talking about anywhere else. But is it like that over there? Mm hmm. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, there you go. So it says here, it's if we, uh, let's say we stayed on uh, standard time all year, uh, standard time, the sun would rise at 4.06 a.m. in Boston in June. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> so that would be kind of crazy. So I mean, just fucking close your blinds. Which means you'd have to get up at 3 a.m. to do anything at sunrise. <laughs> Like okay, dude. They honestly need to fucking just like stop. Yeah, just get rid of the daily taping time. Stupid. This is like a a, a a parallel argument. So we're I'm on the side we should just get rid of daylight savings time. It's outdated. But I also definitely latch on to certain uh, traditions that don't make sense, like metric versus. Uh, standard or imperial or whatever like Ew. 99% of the world uses the metric system and America's like no yeah metric's great fucking Michael's <laughs> dad we looked at my, some document Michael's dad had and it was like the date was like 13 5 1984 I was like is your dad fucking German <laughs> and then I was like what is with this date scheme here you know yeah, that was weird. I was like, why did he write it like this? I was like, huh. I mean, that, that's how the world writes it, right? America's just yeah. fucking being weird. America's weird. The world is day, month, year, which makes sense. Maybe Small my increment, dad, next I The only reason I can think is my dad's always dealing with overseas companies, or at least he used to. No, no, to. yeah. That's why I So maybe, maybe that's why he was writing it like that. Who knows? When Probably. I was in Europe, that's how we wrote it. And that's yeah. how the army writes it. The military writes I, it like that. I... I disagree that it makes sense i am a fan of month first then day just because and i understand what you're saying is like you know there are small pieces in a large month so the small piece should go first but to me like the smaller total amount so like 12 months the month should go first and there's you know 28 to 31 days in the month that should go second so like start with start with the small and go to the large but yeah both make sense I think I think no. I could be wrong. Both don't gonna... make sense. <laughs> Both make sense, James. Well, I a thought... day is a smaller increment than a month, Evan. I mean, I don't know. It who is, but just because there's numerically days, more days, that's but not. There are more the same. days than months. <laughs> um, I, I assume that we did it like that, but I mean, I'm assuming in England they write it the way the rest of Europe writes it, but I could be yeah. wrong. Probably. Everybody writes it like that. Everybody writes it like that, except for us. We are. Alone. Well, I was gonna say I thought that we wrote it like that because in English we say you know no. October third, blah blah blah. You know that's probably why. But you know that's a logical argument. I don't know why. I don't. I can't. I don't know why England is the way it is. But they. We don't. When put I was seconds in England, before minutes, do we, James? I don't think so. Yes, we do. Well, there's see a completely countdown reversed. timer. No, there's no, no, completely no, no. reversed. It's hours, minutes, seconds. Right? Yes. A countdown so, timer is seconds, minutes, hours. No, no. that's not true. That's not true. For reading like, it from it, left to right, no. as we do that's in... True. That's wrong. <laughs> in, that's, that's, that is a made-up lie. That is not true. <laughs> it goes is it a made-up li- Is a made-up lie hours, a minutes, truth? Seconds. But yeah. It's a different kind of truth. Yeah. It's fake news is what it is. It's, it's alternate... 
What was it alternate alternate facts? facts. Yeah, there that's it. <laughs> oh geez, I don't yeah, know. I don't man. know. I wish I wish they would just stop it, stop daylight saving time. But you know, but it's probably not going to happen. So whatever. Yeah, that, is there is there like a lobby big daylight savings time? Like <laughs> like what like what is the financial? Apparently, it costs businesses money in productivity and like employee confusion because Probably. daylight savings time is so hard on people. You know, I don't I don't know why it's still around. Is it just like not priority? Like it's it be it's like literally signing into law. Okay, we're done. Like I just don't know why I don't get rid of it. You know? I really don't know why. It's like the penny. Like why are we keeping pennies? Mhm. You know? But the penny I can understand, right? Like people have pennies and all this kind of shit. Like I get it, right? But the fucking daylight savings time it's not money. No one is making money off it. No one's like, we have a whole business selling extra hours to people. Like, I, <laughs> right. I don't understand why it's why it's still a thing. I really don't. I'm really confused by it. Like, what's the monetary? America is a business, so there has to be some kind of monetary influence to keep a thing around. But there's nothing for that. It just is. It just is. You know, and tradition is if, not enough. Wonder if it's like big coffee, because like, man, oh, people are gonna be. be fucking tired. We're gonna make a bunch of extra money. These three days after daylight savings time, once a that, year. That that is, I mean, it sounds silly, but that's the kind of shit that companies think about, right? It could be, could be some shit like that. Could be you some know? advertising, like people will always complain about daylight savings time on Facebook to to you know interact with uh, their followers and the public, and then they can sell more ads to these people. It's like you know, it's very meta, James. Yeah, could be. We seem to be well, like China. You did there. One time zone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Done. <laughs> it takes 19 hours to cross one one time zone. Mm-hmm. Yep. It seems like a big deal now when you think about it, but if you lived in it, you'd be like, yeah, it's dark there. Mm-hmm. But it's still 8 p.m. Or it's still 8 a.m. It wouldn't matter. Like, you wouldn't care. You right. know? It's just like your, it's just like your fake friendships. Is it fake? <laughs> <laughs> or is it not? Like, I mean, is the time, is it dark? I mean, is it 8 a.m. or is it not 8 a.m.? If you say mm-hmm. it is, it is. If it's a friend, it is. If it's a fucking, you know, if you came. Right. Did you come? Uh-huh. You did. There's the, there's the question. In China, though, do they, like, let's say you live in a part of China where 8 a.m. is when the sun rises, let's just say, right? Or 7 a.m. Yeah. or whatever. But in another part of China, it's 3 a.m., right? So do no, they, it's, does it's everyone still seven or eight a.m.? No, I know, right? But like, there it's they still live dark in the dark, yes, or whatever, right? Do they? Does ever? Does the whole nation get up at the same time? You know, does everyone get up at eight a.m. and the work starts mm-hmm. at nine a.m. for Probably. everybody? Whether it's dark outside for me or light outside for them, Probably. or if you live in Alaska, that's madness. If you live in certain parts of Alaska, half the year you're going to be in the dark. And that's normal. You're just like, okay, you're not thinking, oh, it's dark outside. I need to sleep. Oh, I'll sleep for 40 hours today. Like, no, you, you, you're you up. There's a great so, movie with that, with uh, Al Pacino. Yeah, it's Ins- excellent. Insomnia. Yeah, I know. It's a good movie. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. They're like at the school, and he's like, he's like, well, let's go talk to whoever. They're like, it's 10 o'clock. He's like, so? They're like, at night. He's like, oh. Because it's yeah. like still light out. <laughs> He's like, yeah. what the hell? Like, <laughs> Dude, when we were in Europe, I'm sure they told Evan about this, but when we were in Europe, there's a whole thing where Americans have all these problems because it gets it's so dark there that Americans are like have to get lamps in their house to simulate sunlight. Because we'll have like people get depressed and have fuck and fucking problems there. Hmm. You know, in, in England, that's what they told me when we were on our base. They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know, it could be a thing, you know, where it fucks with you, you know, because it's, it's not daylight when you're, when you're used to it, mm-hmm. you know? Why? Was it getting, was the sun rising at, at 3 a.m. and setting uh, at 2 p.m. or something? Or? I mean, it wasn't that bad, but it was, the sun would come up really early and go down really early hmm. because they're when, just high. Yeah, when James and I were, like, in Scotland for a weekend... <clears throat> sharing a dorm room. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. Uh, the sun woke me up. I was like, God, I'm fucking tired. What time is it? Thinking like, the, it's like bright sun right in the window. You're like, it must right. be like 
9 a.m. or something. Yeah. You look at my phone. It was like 4.30 in the morning. I was like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. But then I mean, conversely, it gets dark at 3 p.m. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's normal over there. Like, there's no daylight savings time to delineate that. That's fucking normal. So we're just weird in America. We're like, it has to be like 8 a.m. has to mean a certain kind of the sun has to be doing a certain thing because we're all fucking cavemen. I don't know. It's weird. Let's see. Daylight saving time. Where do they do it? Everywhere so they except also... Arizona, Puerto Rico. No, I'm looking. Alaska. I mean, over all over the world. Oh, nowhere? Yeah, that's an American thing. Uh, all over Europe, they do it. It's all that's, color. That's just because we pressure them. That's peer pressure. Um, it looks like Chile does it. And one other country that I can't identify in South America. They have different time zones. Do they actually do daylight savings time? Yeah. That's fucking weird. But they might be doing it at <laughs> a different time of the year than we're doing it. Yeah, you know? probably. Like Chile is opposite of us, right? Like they're they're about to be in summer. Yeah. So they're probably just enabling daylight saving time, you know? We need to go to, we <laughs> they're, go to Chile. They're we turning it on. Us. Yeah. We need a summer in Chile. I was just thinking that we should buy a place down there. Yeah, we should. We can all take. We'll all take our, you know, equipment illegally, because we're not supposed to take government equipment out of the country. Uh, someone bring like a Raspberry guns? Pi router. Uh, oh, never mind. Fucking <laughs> VPN to Mike's apartment. We're all good. Yep. Oh, there you go. Bring that guy along. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> the, the, the guy who's he moaning cool. in the street. <laughs> It's out in the fucking road moaning. Michael's 14 stories up in the air. You can hear this fucking guy moaning <laughs> from the street. Like, what the fuck is going on outside? Dude, dude hey, yo, this hook. place, like, I'll have the window open in my room, and I can just, like, like it's a, you know, they say, like, sound carries or whatever. Yeah. It's true. Like, there'll be two people downstairs just talking, and I can fucking hear them. I'm like, what the fuck? You know? Like, on the street. Yeah. That is so crazy. That is so crazy. He I'm literally like, 14 stories on? up, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty wild. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so, we so need yeah, daylight re saving we need time. Awesome. Rethink our inks. Yeah, exactly. Ink equals time. Um, so no more EDT, right? EST. <laughs> Dude, the mo the I know this is just like a dumb thing, like a pet peeve thing of mine. But like people at work, like they'll write EST, you know, mm -hmm. and it's like June. You know, I'm like, they mean EDT. That's definitely like, a pet peeve of yours. That yeah, people don't know the difference. I'm Every like, well, I if they're EDT, gonna write, I'm like, I'm like, if they're gonna write, be that precise and write EST, then write the correct thing. You know, otherwise, just write Eastern or ET yeah. or whatever. You know, like <laughs> I type Eastern or Central or West. Like, or don't you yeah. know? Don't write don't... precisely the wrong thing. Whenever I see you know? EDT, I'm like, oh, someone doesn't. Someone's using a weird, some weird term. I don't even think about the that's the, our, the daylight that's Eastern daylight time. That's the that's the correct, proper. So what's Eastern Standard Time? That's what we're in now. Now, when daylight savings goes away. Yeah, we're now in EST. Yeah, see, James, James, and I are on the same page here. Mike's okay, like, this is yeah. the most enraging thing in my life. Yeah, this is the, he's the guy on Reddit typing your instead of your and trying to correct people. I do that. Please. See? Let's, let's <laughs> take, take pride in our grammar. <laughs> uh, but, Mike, I want you to start sending out uh, all your, like, invites. And anytime you mention time in an email, I want you to put it in, like, GMT minus six. Yeah, right. there you go. Exactly. I'm just looking it up here. EST is UTC minus five. Yeah, and EDT is UTC minus four. There you go. Start doing that. Yeah, th yeah. I think we should all start doing that. Just the fucking people be like, "What the fuck? What time zone is this in? Are we in Australia?" <laughs> like, no, man, that's, that's Eastern Daylight Time. Like, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Daylight. Dude, time. I will always put EDT or EST if that's what I mean. You know, so I never do. I'm always EST. Or if I don't, if I'm not going to do that, I'll just put ET. Eastern time. Yeah, that's fine. Easy, right? Just do that. If I see ET, I'm like, oh, et tu toi. So I'm like, oh, he means some fancy, some weird word. Oh, like et PM? 
What does PM mean or AM? I don't know. Ah, we don't know. Pre midnight, after midnight? No, it has a weird ass. It means something crazy. It's a long ass word. Pre- PM is a long word. Let's see. PM. 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 Where is it? Chemistry, material science, computing. Nope. 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 Other uses. How can how can it not be here? It's rare. AM, no one ever PM it. time. <laughs> it's meaning. antiquated. And no one yeah, says AM or PM. Yeah, no yeah. one. It's ever. a dead like term. Those, yeah, they've been deprecated. <clears throat> what does AM mean? Uh, ha, 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 ha. Anti meridium. There you go. It's Latin, mm-hmm. meaning before midday. And PM is oh. post midday. Yeah. Okay. Which is after midday. So there All you right. go. I, I accept that. So there you go. Easy enough. We'll all forget so, it, but that's okay. Yeah, so what you do is you say uh, anti... So from now on, say, I'll meet you at 10 anti-meridium. They'd be like... Yeah. <laughs> or we should all just use military time and be done with it, right? Yeah. Which is what I have like my cell phone set to. So. Dude, if I ever become president, my biggest change will be no lady out saving time and military time. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. it. If you say 8 p.m., you'll be shot in the town square. Simple as that. So Shoot three or four people, it'll stop. People will stop using it. Usually, a lot of times when reading like French stuff, like either from Canada or from France, it'll be in military time. Mm-hmm. They'll just have the times like that. And usually next to the I think hour, that's common. yeah, they'll put like 6H, you know, 45M, you know, or mm-hmm. whatever. Like, right. You see that a lot. <clears throat> yep. All right. All right. I put a, another link in here to the Eastern Time Zone uh, Wikipedia page. Oh, God. It has a Wikipedia page? It does. Time it to start zone. correcting. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it tells, has it right there e- EST or EDT, right there. So, yeah. I want to hear nothing from nobody. <laughs> If you're like, gonna there be, has to be, if you're gonna be correct, to be, be correct. <laughs> I, this has to exist, and I want you to find it. A, some kind of daylight savings time EST EDT T-shirt. You, that's for you. Mm, okay. Something to like reinforce, uh, the correct information. You 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 can look at that. I shall. All right. Uh, I've got the solo link in entertainment here. Came across this probably about a month ago. Just got a chuckle out of it, mostly for mostly for Mike. It's little comics, uh, kind of like XKCD or whatever, but uh, based around Chief O'Brien and his like shit life in the transporter room. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read one of them. It's hilarious. It's funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah, these are good. <laughs> nice. Chief O'Brien and uh, Q. Mm-hmm. That's funny. But it's like, you know, a lot of them are based around, like, his, his you know, perceived, uh, it's like, what? I don't know what it was. I was about to say his, his uh, shitty existence, but that's pretty harsh and not necessarily accurate dude i've seen so many posts on uh, reddit about mm-hmm. chief o'brien and they're like man he's like the best character ever yeah they're like he's the deepest character ever and yes. he's always getting fucking shit on <laughs> and he's <laughs> he's always getting hosed you know <laughs> like yeah like there's an episode where he gets captured by god knows who and is like sentenced to like let's say 20 years in jail or something i watched but that they, the other week yeah, but what they do is they just implant the memory in him of him being in jail for 20 years. But yeah. he's not actually in jail for 20 years. They just kind of let him go. Yeah, they're it like, took like right. half an hour. Yeah, and they're like, all right. And so he's like kind of like reliving this in his head and like remembering it. And then he remembers like killing his cellmate who was like his best friend. Mm-hmm. Dude, it's such a good episode. <laughs> You're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, yeah, it's one of the best episodes in all of Star Trek. And he has like PTSD, and you know, like, oh, yep. 
It's fucking crazy. Dude, and they address so much. Like, you know, after they release him, he gets back to the station and he's having dinner and shit. And he's like, starts, uh, like, portioning off food to save because he doesn't know when he's going to be fed again by the guards. And his wife, Keiko's like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, oh, uh, nothing. <laughs> and then, like, near the end, he goes, he, he's like in a fucking cargo bay with a phaser and he like points it at his chin and Dr. Bashir walks in and like, you know, he and uh, O'Brien like breaks down or something. He's like, you know, it really deals with like legit PTSD. He's like, I'm going to fucking kill myself. It's a great episode. It is a great episode. Uh, Chief O'Brien's a great example of how you take uh, a background character who is at first like just some guy and elevate him to like prime character status without ever making him the star of the show. Mm-hmm. Like every time he comes in the show, he matters, and you never question that he matters because they spend a lot of time slow burning his character and building him up. Even though it probably wasn't some like grand scheme to make him a great character from the beginning, but I think they just decided we really like this actor and we're going to do more with him, and that's cool. But I just I mean, you never see that in shows, right? If somebody's a background character, they are a background character. You never see people, if a character fall, if a character, like, let's say it bring a character in a show, like, the main hero saves this person, and this person comes back and lives with the hero. You'll see that person for the next couple episodes, on and off, and that's what they call walk-on cast. Not a main cast member, but a walk-on cast, so they'll come in for a shoot, and they'll leave, you know? Mm-hmm. Those walk-on cast roles, like Chief O'Brien was probably a walk-on cast when he first started, but then by the end of the season, that person's gone. There's no plan to continue their character arc. You're not going to see them again, but instead, they successfully keep him as a walk-on character, but actually give him more depth than most of the main characters of the show. He has a family, a wife, relationship drama, PTSD, all this kind of stuff. There's mm-hmm. a lot of depth to him. It's a pretty amazing job they did with him. Like nobody, you just don't see that in regular TV shows where they build characters to that degree. It's really powerful, honestly. Because you say Chief O'Brien, you know the fuck you're talking about. He has yeah. more depth than Scotty does. You know? Yeah. Matter of fact, I think when people think of Scotty or they think of Chief O'Brien, they don't think of Scotty anymore. When I first thought of Chief O'Brien, when he first came, when they first started showing him, I was like, oh, he's their Scotty. Mm. Finally, they have a guy who's their Scotty. But now he stands alone. When you think of Janet Reno, not Janet Reno, something Reno, the chick from Discovery. Jet Reno. Jet Reno. She's clearly their Scotty. You know? And maybe they'll give her some depth, but she's 100% a Scotty character that they didn't have before. Mm -hmm. I think they were trying to do that, something like that, with uh, maybe the gay dude. Um, Mm -hmm. But he's more like science officer guy, not Scotty, not like kind of, you know, whatever. Uh, But Jet Reno is definitely their Scotty, and there's not much distinguishing her. Just like the guy who plays Scotty in the other Star Trek shows is 100% a Scotty. Like, he's, he's basically doing a parody of that character. You know, Scottish, always getting into trouble, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know. But yeah, well, it's funny because he is, he is really smart, but he's just, you know, he portrays himself as just like a, a wrench turner, you know. Yeah, like, but he's not a dummy. He's like a fucking right. guy, like a doctorate, like six times over his character. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Look, everyone, everyone yeah. in Star Trek is smart. There are no dummies in Star Trek, except for lower decks. But there's no dummies in Star Trek. Yeah, that's know? the thing, like, I always forget. And you're like they remind you every now and again, like, like especially on Star Trek: The Next Generation, and all the characters on the Enterprise, like they're all the top of the top. Yeah, you know, like there's no second stringers. Basically, there's no second stringers on that ship. Yeah, you know, like they're all fucking a one. They're all the smartest people that exist. They're all whatever, you know. Minus the pack lids. No, I mean just on the Enterprise oh. itself. Yeah. yeah. Not not the people they encounter. Yeah, make it go. Yeah, yeah. not those guys. Yeah. Yo, I was like, so oh, dumb. These... And I'm like, they even look retarded. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck, you know? Like, yeah. I'm like, we why did they strong. have to make them look a look this way too, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, it's so ridiculous. I'm like, uh. 
That yeah. that is a funny episode, but uh, ridiculous. Um. Anyway, yeah, man, Chief O'Brien, I like that guy. Yep, <laughs> he's underappreciated. A, he's a solid dude. He's a solid he is dude. A solid dude. Yep. Uh, okay, nothing necessarily in game theory. We we mentioned a bunch of VR stuff before, just casually. Um, I have one link here in the Yum update having to do with James's uh, current obstacle, which is thankfully fading, and something, some good news for him that he already does this. So basically, drinking coffee in the morning helps lower uric acid in your body. Oh, that's actually great. Yeah. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> you can read the article if if anyone's actually interested. It's from uh, timesnownews.com, which is a an Indian website, I think. No. The Could lady be. in the picture looks Indian, and the study is from Jesus Uganda. Christ. <laughs> He's like, it's Indian. <laughs> no, I mean, some guy, this is maybe some guy in Ohio in his no, garage. It is. It is at the top. They have two. Uh, Links they got to some foreign other languages other languages up there. Up there. Oh, and, hey, or hey, one hey, of them hey. is Hindi. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah, other yeah. one is a language I don't know, Mar- Marathi or something. I don't know. Yeah, um, one of the other up. one of the other popular savage, languages. Savage there. languages? No. Uh, yeah. But anyways, <laughs> just a quick mention. No, they, they say uh, coffee contains an enzyme which breaks down purines in the body, which hinders the spread of uh, uric acid. So yeah, nice. great. enjoy your that's coffee, James. Know. That's good to know. I'm glad you. I'm glad you said that. That's good. Yeah. I'm gonna up your up your intake to two pots a day. Yeah. I'm mm. drink like two of these. Two it's in the funny. morning and two two in the evening probably. Like if I if like <laughs> you like, ask me like what does my mom sleep? What does my mom drink? It's just coffee, right? Coke and coffee. Mm-hmm. But she really didn't drink that much. Like maybe over the course of the day, she had like three cups of coffee. You mm-hmm. know. That's she, not was bad. Always, she was always reheating the same one. You yeah. know, I it's know like, I drink okay. more coffee than most people because most people will say they'll have a cup of coffee and they won't finish it or they'll have like a cup, like a regular coffee cup cup, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm drinking like this is 12 plus eight ounces. Mm-hmm. So 20 ounces of coffee, 12 plus eight. I'm just so that's somewhere how I put in the, the vicinity of 20, 19, yeah, that, 21, you know, more, give or take. Yeah, that's how I put it in the Keurig. I have to do 12 and then I have to do an eight. So that's how I'm like 12 plus eight. But it's yeah. <laughs> 20 ounces so i'll drink like two of these in the morning and maybe one sometime at night you know like or midday i'll drink one you know i had two of these already and then i drank one before the show and i'll probably drink another one after the show Mm -hmm. so that's really great to know evan thank you for that Mm -hmm. you're welcome some more confirmation bias never hurts yeah Mm. absolutely um, so Evan, I just added something to my extra section. Um, okay. I wanted to mention this. I was, uh, I heard this recently. It's a little, a little riddle. Okay. Mm-hmm. Why was six afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine got him. Oh no. So let me tell you guys real quick. So three guys, uh, check into a, a, a hotel. It's a motel and sounds hot. They're going now. They're on a business trip, but they're sharing a room, and mm-hmm. it's thirty dollars a night for the room. Mm-hmm. So each one of them's paying ten dollars, right? Okay. Three guys. So they go up. You know, they get checked in. They go up to the room. the The bellhop brings their bags up. Whatever you know, <laughs> whatever he's called. The bellhop who works at the thirty dollar motel. Yes. Yeah. The Jesus homeless Christ. guy across the street who just yeah, takes bags. he's been stealing people's bags <laughs> for months. Yes, the porter. No, yeah. um, and so, he, uh, so the porter goes back downstairs, and then the uh, or the bellhop, whatever the fuck he is, and the person at the front desk says, "Oh, hey, um, actually, I forgot. There's a special on the rooms right now. They're twenty five dollars a night, not thirty dollars a night. Hmm. Here's here's the five bucks. Can you run this back up to those guys? Right." Mm-hmm. <clears throat> There's no way to divide five dollars among three people without leaving a remainder of some kind. Okay. Okay. Um, the bellhop takes two dollars for himself because he wasn't tipped by those guys. Mm. Okay. Thief. And he gives one dollar back to each guy. Okay. 
right? So now each guy effectively paid $9 mm -hmm. for the room, right? $9 each. Mm -hmm. So that's 9 18 27 mm -hmm. Then the bellhop has $2. That's 29 Okay. Where's the dollar? I don't know. What? Yep. He brought away five dollars. He took two dollars. He gave him three dollars. Mm-hmm. I think it's more of a logic riddle than a math riddle, but there's no missing dollar. I don't understand. Maybe I'm dumb. I don't get it. If you have thirty and it's twenty five, mm -hmm. the guy takes five. He brings, he, or the guy takes two out of the five and gives mm -hmm. him three each. All the money's accounted for. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean, where's the, one, where's the dollar? So each guy paid $9 for the room, or no? That's, that's an incorrect statement? Yes, each guy paid $9 for the room. Because they, they received a dollar back each, out of their $10 each. So he's got paid nine dollars for the room. So, so nine dollars was eighteen dollars, twenty-seven dollars, right? Twenty-seven dollars, yeah. And then the bellhop took two bucks for himself. So it's twenty-nine. So where's the other dollar? It's something in your wording. This is making making this stupid. <laughs> got to tell the answer. It's something in the wording. I don't know the answer. Stupid. I don't math know the answer. Doesn't, math doesn't do what you're doing. That's why it I said maybe it's way. a logic problem, not a math problem. It's not yeah. a logic problem. It's not a real problem. This is some made-up fucking trick question shit. He's getting mad, see? He's getting mad because he can't figure it out. No, it's like when people ask, people say, I've, I watched a bunch of videos and people said, they, a guy goes up to people on the street and he interviews them. He says, he says, okay, how old are you? And the guy's like, I'm 18. He's like, okay. He's like, if you were born 10 years ago, how old would you be? The answer is clearly 10. This motherfucker's like 8. Mm. Every time. Every time they say 8. Because people now, they're thinking, 18? He asked my age. Like I was born years 10 years ago. I'm 8. 10 minus. And he asks him. He says, rationalize that. Explain that to me. And they say, 10 minus 8, man. What's wrong with you? Mm. And he's like, so you were born 10 years ago. And you're eight years old then. He's like, yes. And after we, after he puts that thought in their head, now they can't be changed. And I've seen time and time again, the same guy asks the same question to millions of people. And they always, not millions, but like 20 or 30 people. And they always say the same shit. Mm -hmm. So there's something in the way this is worded because math doesn't do what you're doing. There's not a missing dollar. Otherwise, math is that, if that's the case, then math is broken, inherently broken. And there's a serious problem with it. Right. There's just some fucking stupid shit here going on here. There's some fucking tomfoolery going on with the shit. Okay. So we've been blowered, Evan. We, we, we've been blowered. <laughs> it's a famous blower game. It's the games that the blowers are known for. <clears throat> I don't know the answer. So you guys think on it. You let me know. Oh, my God, Michael. We're don't, bring this, don't bring this shit in here without the answer. There's no answer. There I is an hear, answer. I want to hear, hear from our listeners. Look, money. Do they have the answer? Money is a human construct. Okay, so don't worry about this fucking dollar. It's like this guy. Don't worry about that guy. That's why. That dollar is the Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? No. The Fed gets their dollar. Yeah. Taxes. Taxes is the answer. Taxes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Taxes is the answer. Okay. We done? Good show. Uh, anything in the extra section, James? Um, yeah, so or? I got the three... No, 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 nothing to talk about. I have the three videos. The meta video by CNET, which is a synopsis, and it just covers all the high points and low points. And then I have the two coverage from the two VR YouTubers. Uh, Fia, uh, sh her, her thing is more like... Her video... The video is called... Uh, just to give you an idea... Uh, roasting Facebook... And dying inside, yeet. Okay. <laughs> and 
And it's her sitting. She live streamed watching the video. So she watched it on. She watched it as it was being live aired. And her, this is her reaction. And the other one is a more thought out reaction from uh, Thrill Seeker, who's a more introspective VR YouTuber. And he wants to see the see see the uh, see VR grow. And he doesn't feel too confident in Facebook. He covers Facebook and he covers all the VR stuff. So if you want to know about VR, Thrill Seeker's the guy. He's his content's amazing. And if you're interested in the metaverse and what he has to say about it, I think if you're interested in the metaverse, you should watch his video. Watch the CNET video and his video. Watch Fia's video for laughs. But his video is like pivotal in like trying to understand what the problem is with Facebook's version of the metaverse. So all of them are linked there. Cool. Neat. Thank you very much. Uh, I think that's everything, so we're going to head out. Uh, thank you all for listening. If you want to get in contact with us, send us an email, feedback at iopanelpodcast.com. Check out our website, iopanelpodcast.com. You'll find all of our social media links, current episodes, and ways to support the podcast via Patreon or Amazon Affiliate. Hope you all have a good week. Talk to you next time. I'm drowning in something and I can't come out Just show me loving, I need loving Me, myself, can't enough It's like being a duck to a crushing heart I want you to know how bad it hurts You can't ever sound like a lot my heart Oh, 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 are you dreaming of, of me now? Oh, oh, oh,